One of them was like, were you molested as a child? I heard all gays were molested as children. And I was like, hell no. I said, I was gay, not an altar boy. <laughs> like, I think you projecting your church problems onto me. And then that guy was like, oh, you really shouldn't speak like that. Jesus died for your sins. And I was like, bitch, please. <laughs> okay, Jesus never came to China. <laughs> hey, what up, what up, Toronto? Um, as you can see, I decided to wear my gay camouflage today. Um, I'm just gonna zip up so you can see me. Earlier this year, I taped a comedy special for a couple of the largest gay cable networks in Canada and the US. Uh, but I don't tell people about it because they censored almost everything I said. Oh. It was crazy, because I was so excited, because usually I'm doing like a lot of, you know, mainstream TV stuff, and I was like, oh, I have all this gay energy, LGBT, all these jokes that I can only tell to my people. And apparently they told me my material was too explicit <laughs> for gay cable. TV. I was like, is this not the channel that shows porn from 2 to 4 a.m.? Like, they do fisting from 4 to 5 a.m. But my joke is too explicit. So don't watch it because here tonight you're going to hear the uncensored, fully explicit version. I have final creative control. Ain't nobody cutting none of this shit out. <laughs> and we're gonna play a little game. Try to see if you can figure out what parts of my material were censored. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. You know, I'm really openly gay on stage, as you can see. I'm, I'm not exactly hiding it. Um, and after the show, I had these two religious protesters come up to me and they were saying like crazy shit. Like one of them was like, were you molested as a child? I heard all gays were molested as children. And I was like, hell no. I said I was gay, not an altar boy. <laughs> like I think you projecting your church problems onto me. And then that guy was like, oh, you really shouldn't speak like that. Jesus died for your sins. And I was like, bitch, please. <laughs> okay, Jesus never came to China. <laughs> like, I'm sorry that you died, but that has nothing to do with me. Okay? Like, to me, Jesus is just some white-ass bitch who got killed by some other white ass bitches. <laughs> and yes, that was censored. <laughs> I don't know why, I don't know why. Um, and before one of you uh, tries to find me after the show to tell me Jesus wasn't white, <laughs> I am not the one you need to convince. Like first go to every goddamn church, tell them to take down all their stained glass windows and paintings that depict Jesus' skin is so pale, you'd think he was a character from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> Although that would make a lot of sense. You know, no wonder Jesus came back to life. They should have staked him in the heart, not the wrist or decapitated them, burn them, so many options. 
All I'm trying to say is if Buffy lived 2,000 years ago, she would've got the job done. Yes, that was also censored. Apparently you can't stay vampire Jesus, he's too, anyway. <laughs> and so sometimes people get upset at me because they think I'm being disrespectful to Jesus. Because I am. But actually, hear me out. I actually think it is Buddha who does not get enough respect. Yeah. Like, Buddha's imagery is used to sell everything from coconut water to yoga mats. And recently, my friends took me to this place. I'm sure some of y'all know it. It's very popular in Toronto. They took me to a restaurant called Buddha's Veggie Restaurant. And it got me thinking, I was like, since when did Buddha become a symbol for vegetarianism? Like, I hate to break this to you, but Buddha was not even a vegetarian. Like, you can ask Alexa, Siri, Wikipedia. And even if you don't look it up, isn't it kind of obvious? I ain't trying to fat shame somebody who died 2,500 years ago, but when is the last time you saw a vegetarian who looked like Buddha? <laughs> like, think of the most famous image of Buddha, right? What's he doing? He's sitting down, content look on his face. What's he doing? His favorite thing, he rubbing that belly. You think Buddha was rubbing his belly because it's full of cabbage? You think he had a content look on his face because he just ate a bowl of bok choy? No, the dude clearly ate a cow a day. Yeah. Keeps Jesus away. <laughs> they were rivals, they were rivals. <laughs> and so I am so sick and tired of a holy figure from my religion being commoditized, and nobody caring, that I'm gonna open up my own damn restaurant. Yeah, it's gonna be called the Jesus House of Pancakes. <laughs> Take that, Christians. <laughs> J-Hop. <laughs> Where every day is Fat Tuesday. <laughs> and, you know, once the first um, restaurant is successful, we're gonna franchise, but instead of franchisees, we're gonna call our franchisees apostles. <laughs> and it'll be their job to spread the message. When you come to the Jesus House of Pancakes, you get your very own taste of Jesus. <laughs> the other white meat. So the reason I was at Buddha's Veggie Restaurant in the first place was I've been trying to get into better shape. I don't know about you, but the past few years have been a little bit difficult and like I'm an emotional eater and it's been an emotional three years. Yeah, bad combination. <laughs> Ended up putting on about 50 pounds. Like I had to throw away a bunch of my wardrobe and start all over, right? Like I started from extra small, then I went to small. I had to throw it away and I went from small to medium and soon, if not careful, I'm gonna go from medium to extra medium. <laughs> I cannot afford this shit. <laughs> and so, okay, so I decided I needed to get into better shape, so I decided to join the Toronto Gay Volleyball League. <laughs> yeah, one of the most fun leagues, it's actually the largest amateur sports league in all of North America. There's 800 members. It's crazy, it's better across 10 schools, three days a week, it's super crazy. I was having a lot of fun, but I gotta admit that when I started playing, like there was this disturbing trend of whenever people would lose, they're getting called bottoms. <laughs> like it's an insult or something. I even overheard this one guy say, I only bottom when I'm high on crack. I was like, bottoming's not something to be ashamed of. It takes a lot of hard work and preparation. <laughs> and so I see a few confused faces in the crowd. 
I know there's, there's a lot of queer people, but do we have like straight allies who need me to explain what a bottom is? <laughs> All right, I'll keep it short, I'll keep it short. So to me, bottoming is like Christmas. Some people like to give and some people like to receive. Obviously, bottoms like to receive. Don't worry, that's as deep as I'll go. I'm gonna combat this bottom bigotry. So I decided to put together my own team and we decided to call ourselves the Superpower Bottoms. And it was our mission to spread the message of bottom pride. And now, when I was first putting the team together, it's a little bit difficult to find players because a lot of the volleyballers thought they were too butch or whatever to be on a team called Super Power Bottoms. <laughs> like, even one of my best friends was like, Vong, I'd love to join your team, but I'm not a bottom. I'm versatile. I was like, okay, Ryan. Just because one night you took home a boy so Nelly that he forced you to stick it up his ass does not make you versatile. Okay, so we finally did get enough players together to put together a full roster and our first order of business was to design our uniforms. So we ended up going with a yellow shirt with bright red lettering and chocolate brown shorts. In a color scheme my friends like to call bottoming gone wrong. Whatever, I'm nasty, call it bottoming gone right. Listen, at the end of Pride weekend, if your bed sheets don't look like a Jackson Pollock painting, you are not trying hard enough. So on the front of our uniforms, we put our team name, the Super Power Bottoms, and on the back, we came up with our individual um, names. Instead of using our real names, we decided to come up with superhero bottom names. So my name was Hop on Top. <laughs> because it's instructional and it rhymes. And our next player called himself Sweet Cheeks. Another player called himself Sunny Side Up. But then the names got progressively nastier. Our next player called himself Black Hole. But to be fair, on the volleyball court, he's a very good receiver. <laughs> Nothing got past him. Our next player called himself Sticky Buns. But our final player, he out us all. He's so nasty, he called himself Drive Through. I gotta admit, I was still self-conscious about the weight. It was taking a while for me to lose the weight. And so I wasn't really expecting anybody to hit on me, but out of nowhere, the super hot guy came up and, you know, hit on me after the tournament. And so by that point, I was feeling kind of hoochie. So we went back to his place right quick. And I gotta admit, like, his apartment was strange. He had, like, all these statues and paintings of Buddha. You know, one of those guys. But I was like, you know what? He's pretty hot and I'm pretty desperate. <laughs> so I'm just gonna ignore that shit, right? So I'm on his couch making out and he looks at me and he's like, Vom, you're so fucking hot. I was like, thank you. I've had like some confidence issues lately. That really means a lot. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm really into chunky Asians. <laughs> I was like, what the hell, bitch? Y'all cannot say that shit to somebody. So I slap the hoe. <laughs> and I get ready to leave, but on my way out, I get a closer look at some of these statues and paintings. And suddenly I realize, oh my God, that's not even Buddha. Those are just drawings of random fat Asians. <laughs> it's you trying to add me to his collection. So I start running as quick as I can, right? Because of the extra weight, I didn't get very far. 
Like I was literally chub chased. Like I'm running, like, <laughs> like he was the chub chaser and I was the chub. But luckily for me, he lives in the village. And on that day, I was also wearing my gay camouflage. And right before he caught up to me, I found, you know, one of those pride crosswalks with a rainbow? <laughs> so I unzipped my jacket, threw it on the floor, laid on the ground, and poof, he ran right past me. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. <laughs>